In the last session, we focused on theory, how to incorporate the theory in the introduction and literature review, and how to search for those elements using Mendeley. In this particular session, I'm going to use a much more structured approach and identify the steps in incorporating theory in a paper. Now, the first step, you have to briefly describe the theory in the introduction of your research paper. Now, you've started writing about your research paper. You've already searched a particular theory that can help you explain the relationships within your study or the proposed relationships that you are going to study. It could be one theory, it could be two, or it could be three. Well, normally I'm asked how many theories we can incorporate. To a maximum, obviously, my suggestion may differ with other researchers. And whatever I've, I've done through this series, most of it is at times my own opinion as to what I do, how I work, or how I write. It may altogether negate what you've been taught in the class. It may negate what your supervisor says. But this is my opinion. This is what I have done or what I normally do. So how many theories? To me, the best is incorporating not more than three. Then it becomes a sort of a mixture, a mix that doesn't make sense because you are just incorporating theories just to explain the relationships and there is no sense to, to what you are doing. So a maximum of three is fine. But then again, this does not mean that you, you just incorporate theories just for the sake of doing it. It has to be logical and it must make sense. Just like we did in an earlier example in the last session, CSR to team outcomes was explained using social identity theory. Team outcomes to OP and CSR to OP was primarily discussed in light of Rousseau's based view. Now this research here needed these two theories. I could have incorporated or used other theories as well to explain the impact of CSR on team outcomes, but I only used one particular theory. And I tried to make sure that with one particular theory, I can explain these relationships. Now, moving on, in this session, the focus is on steps that we must take in incorporating theory in a paper. So what's the first step? Briefly describe the theory in the introduction. Here are a few examples that I've already opened. So what you first do is once you've described the gaps and all, and we are going to talk about how to describe the gaps that will follow. So you start in the introduction after you have mentioned the gaps and all the existing research, the gaps in existing research. Here it is. You explain the present study utilizes social identity theory and the resource based view. Now that you have identified the two theories that you are going to use. The next step is briefly describe each one of them. Just a sentence or two is enough. This is social identity theory and this is resource based view. Now, once you've done that, now CSR efforts and how are they linked to your RBV? So you may link briefly the variables with the theories. If you've got multiple the theories or theories, this is a good idea. And then your contribution. Obviously, you can mention the contribution in greater detail in the contribution section of the introduction as well. So once you have done that, the first step, complete. Incorporate the theory in the introduction. Similarly, you can do it like this as well here. Here is another example. The theoretical lens for this study is knowledge based view. Well, again, this is not enough. Then again, what it is and has it been used in your area? Yes, it has been used. So there is theoretical support for using this particular theory. Now, once you have done this, the next step is identify the contribution towards the theory. So what is it that you are doing 
that is you are contributing towards the theory and this is done in the contribution section in the introduction where have a look here through the integration of kbv we identify how km enablers and different km processors so what you are doing is you are integrating knowledge base to you to explain these relationships here this is how you write about the integration of the theory in your study with the relationships so what you are saying is that these relationships have not been studied in light of this particular theory so this particular theory is helping us explain these relationships and this is your contribution how to write about it this is how you write about it again we have seen in the previous example as well let's go back here it is the research contributes to the literature on sit and rbv by demonstrating the relationships so you are explaining the relationships based on these two theories now the next step describe the study relationships in the literature review based on the theory now theory will help you explain the relationships now this explanation must be there or made part of your literature review how have a look here literature review and i'm going to use this particular example here csr and op how csr and op have a look here so the integration of csr in business practices can help so how is csr linked to op all that all reasoning done now the relationship between csr and op can be further explained in light of rbv how it's not enough that you just simply write that okay this relationship can be explained in light of this theory you have to explain how so the resource based view is what it is it is about resources and capabilities is csr a resource yes csr is a resource and it's a capability and these are the references so once your csr efforts increase they can help provide a distinct point of differentiation now you are building an argument trying to link csr with op based on rbv how first you explain that is csr a resource yes is this resource help helpful in improving organizational performance or elements of organizational performance yes so this is how you build your argument based on the theory now there are other examples as well look at this kbv recognizes knowledge as the most strategically important firm resource while el is committed to discovery and exploitation of strategic value creation now el is about taking risks while from a knowledge management perspective an organization system that fosters experimentation and risk taking aids learning knowledge creation and dissemination so what happens is that kbv recognizes knowledge as an strategic asset and it's a important resource while el is committed to discovery and exploitation of strategic value creation now here the link is developed based on strategy or how these concepts can improve the organization's strategic value creation so el is about taking risk and it can help obviously in knowledge creation and dissemination based on these reference so the elements of el are linked to knowledge management based on knowledge based view similarly we can have some other example as well kbv identifies knowledge as a key resource and a strategic asset that empowers the business to create value now in light of kbv successful utilization of knowledge based resources and effective implementation of km processes is imperative to achieve better performance here what the authors are doing is they are trying to explain the relationship between knowledge management processes and project success based on knowledge based view so if you've got knowledge within the organization this can help you improve your performance make you a more successful organization and this is the argument now kbv supports the idea that when knowledge is effectively managed it creates distinguish 
or distinguishing capabilities that contribute to improved performance. There is an increasing need for the use of knowledge management as an enabler to improve organizational outcomes. This is an organizational outcome. When organizations are facing rapid changes both within and outside the organization, knowledge related capabilities can provide support. Now, for example, KM processes such as these here can drive productivity and profitability. So knowledge based view is of the opinion that knowledge is a critical resource and that as a critical resource, if managed effectively can help improve the organization's chances for success. So this is how you are using knowledge based view to build an argument to link these variables.